What are those seven types of wisdom? First type of wisdom is realization of what is to be avoided. That is called he shunya state. Second type of wisdom is awareness of the means for the removal of the uh, suffering. That is he he to chin state. Third state is awareness of spiritual evolution. That is uh, prapya prapt state. Uh, fourth uh, type of pragya or fourth state of pragya is awareness of fulfillment and accomplishment that is chikirasha shunya state. Uh, uh, fifth type of wisdom is awareness of the purpose of experience and liberation that is called chitta sattva kritarsha uh, The sixth is gun leenata that is means dissolving of the gunas, awareness of the fulfillment of the work of gunas. So, you are not uh, entangled, you are not uh, engulfed or uh, enslaved of gunas. And seventh is awareness of one's own self, uh, atmisthiti. Uh, that is in the Vedantic tradition called Brahma in the Sankh tradition it is called Kaivalya in the uh, bhakti tradition it is called mukti or living with your uh, deity. Different uh, traditions call this state in different terms and uh, pathways of achieving those states are also different. In yoga we call it kaivalya and that is uh, in the uh, Veda Bhashya of Patanjali Yoga Sutra is called atmisthiti. These are the seven types of wisdom. These wisdom are available to us, we all have all of these in some degree. So, it is not about uh, presence or absence of these wisdom, these are there in all of us in some degree. When we are able to use these more often, when we are able to operate mostly on these, uh, these wisdom, then we can say that we have come to the maturity of these wisdom. For example, realization of what is to be avoided that is related to how much food we should eat, how much uh, uh, sense indulgence we should allow ourselves, uh, where we need to put in effort, uh, what we should avoid in our behavior all that is he shunni state. We all have uh, there in us to some degree awareness of the means of removal. How I can get rid of my suffering, how I can get rid of my dysfunctionality. All of us have some idea, some notion, uh, some insight how I can become more functional, how I can become more wise, how I can become more intelligent, how I can become more productive. We all know to at least to some degree about it. So, that is he, he to chain state. How I can get rid of my dysfunctionality. Um, we all have that to some degree, awareness of spiritual evolution. What can make me the best version of myself? What is the most meaningful thing to me? What can make me very productive executive, excellent human being or a member of community? We all have some idea about it. So, we also have prapya prapt state. So, that is also there in some degrees. Fourth is the achievement and accomplishment. If you see the definition of flourishing, uh, that is reflected in the acronym PARMA. Uh, that is positive emotion, positive achievement, positive relationships. In the PARMA, which is the reflection of flourishing and we have talked about it in the earlier sessions, there is a component called sense of positive achievement what can give me sense of fulfillment. In the Maslow's need hierarchy, it is related to actualization. So, we all have some element, some degree of actualization there. We all know what gives us deepest fulfillment, what gives us sense of positive, most meaningful accomplishment. So, we all know that at least to some degree. So, we all have th these wisdoms with us. 
with the practice of yoga we can bring clarity and we get the energy and power to operate on this wisdom in the yogic tradition and other traditions as well we talk about three types of shakti uh, ichha shakti gyan shakti and kriya shakti ichha shakti is power of will how much i have that willingness to do or accomplish or to engage myself for the positive efforts in life that is ichha shakti second is gyan shakti how much i know about it we discussed tattva bodh in the previous sessions that is gyan shakti knowing about what is worth accomplishing what is worth pursuing that is gyan shakti and kriya shakti is actually applying that in my behavior in my transactions in the day to day life that is kriya shakti most of us have ichha shakti some of us have more gyan shakti what distinguishes more successful from the average successful or less successful people is kriya shakti those who are able to implement those who are able to do according to their ichha shakti and gyan shakti they become most successful in the wisdom also this logic applies those who have this wisdom only at cognitive level they will operate with certain level of functionality they will operate at certain level of productivity but those who constantly work on refining this wisdom and apply that wisdom in their behavior and in their transactions they can become more successful they can they can become more joyful in their life when my mind is uh, uh, interaction in terms of its social interaction so that is reflected in the 33rd uh, sutra of yoga sutra which says that maitri karuna mudita apekshanam sukh dukh punya punya vishyanam bhavanatah chitta prasadanam uh, in relation to happiness misery virtue and vice that means uh the interaction with the people who have experience of happiness misery virtue and vice uh by cultivating attitudes friendliness compassion gladness and indifference respectively the mind becomes purified and peaceful a yogi is the one who operate from the space of friendliness with the happy people when they look happiness around themselves they do not feel jealousy they do not feel uh, uh, inferiority they become friendly with the happiness when they see around that people who are miserable they do not develop an aversion towards them instead of that they develop compassion towards them and that arises from the reflection that when i have pain when i have misery how do i feel similarly that person also might be feeling and that reflection result into emergence of empathy and then compassion similarly when yogi see a virtuous person or a talented person when they look at talent around them they do not develop irsha they do not develop jealousy they do not try to impose negativity in the virtues instead of that they are they enjoy seeing the talent they appreciate the talent and that is uh, uh, that what we call mudita the great quality of mudita which is gladness towards virtues and talent and when they come across wise human weaknesses they do not uh, have a great animosity they try to avoid that not that yogi try to avoid the wise when they look around wise but it is more uh, like what jesus christ said and mahatma gandhi also said it uh, said and wrote about it many times don't have dislike to your enemy 
but you have to have dislike to the wrong things it is doing. So, in the same way yogi developed a kind of upeksha at the personal level, but also does whatever is required to establish or follow dharma when they say vices or human weaknesses around themselves.